Hi, I am Kimmy with On William Street, and this week we are working on our month five for our 2023 quilt along. So if you are new here, this year for our quilt along, we're doing a quilt as you go. And all that means is that we're going to quilt each block individually, and then we're gonna put them all together into a quilt top. Makes it a little bit easier, especially if you're new to free motion quilting and aren't as comfortable with it. You can easily quilt out and learn some new designs on a smaller space before you transfer them to a big full-size quilt. So if you have any questions or else if you're just getting started and want to catch up, head to the blog post. Um, I'll link it underneath the video. And there you're gonna find all the information on everything that we talk about today, diagrams and all the things that you'll need. Also, while you're there, don't forget to check out our shop and find your next modern quilting project. So this month, we are working on, like I said, month block five. So what block that's going to be in your layout is we're going to be doing the second row, the middle block. So if you have any questions on what blocks we're working on, that diagram is in the monthly post. So check that out and it will tell you exactly where one to use. So if you have a specific layout, like we're doing a rainbow swirl, um, you want to make sure to use the right one so that we can join them together and cut them out as we need to. So let's go ahead and go over the quilting plan and then we can get started. All right, so this month we are gonna do feathers. Are you guys ready for this? Don't worry, I know you can do it and they aren't as hard as they look. So you'll notice some of our quilting plan is blank and that's just because I want to show you how to quilt these feathers. But first let's go ahead and go over what we're gonna do and then I will draw those out so you can see that motion a little bit better. So the inside here, I'm gonna go in and just kind of make like a faceted outline here. And I'm gonna kind of leave most of this blank. I like this kind of um, emptier area where we've got a lot going on around it. Then in the white border, we will go ahead and quilt a wreath of feathers. So we're just gonna be doing one side of the feather. So it makes it a little bit easier. You're not trying to match two sides. Then we're gonna do some straight lines. So we'll start in here, do our facet, end here, and then we'll go ahead and quilt out all of our feathers. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and move out to one of these triangles and then we will go ahead and just do our lines moving along the edges of the block as we need to and we'll just work our way all the way around and I am doing an even number if you notice an even number puts me always ending starting and ending on the same side if you do an odd number you'll end up here which isn't a bad thing and just would mean a little bit more traveling. So I want to keep it to the least amount of traveling in between blocks. So now after we've finished all of these, then just like in our other blocks, we will go ahead and travel out along the side, down. And these little things, you're not going to worry about hitting the end. You can see they've got the little curve and I love these for a nice fill motif. So what I'm gonna do is just go down, a slight curve, and I'm gonna keep these fairly close together. You can see I've scores five in there. So four or five is gonna be a good amount for that skinny strip. Then we'll come down here, do our three radiating lines here. But for this, we want to be starting over here in this corner. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna follow down along the side of the triangle and back out so that I can do the feathers and what looks like a wreath all the way around. So then we'll come over here, fill in this, block with the feathers and then follow along the edge, go down. And then well, I can start this on either side. I stood over there when I was sketching it, but I would just start it here on this side the same. Do our back and forth, come down, do our three radiating lines, come out, and then we'll fill the feathers in here along the top, down. Again, the same thing. Come over, do our three lines, fill in feathers across the top, down. One last thing, do the lines out, fill in our three points and then finish the feathers. So I wanna go ahead and show you how we're gonna do the feathers here. I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit onto that corner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and make the feather, the big feather first. And I find that it's easier for me to go from the top. If you're fine going from the bottom, that's fine. Uh, it's just whatever you're more comfortable with. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna travel down and I'm gonna stop here. Then I'm gonna bounce back along the top and then we're gonna come down to the next one. Now here, I'm gonna go ahead and try to fill that corner, make it big and fill that corner, bring it around. And I'm following the stitch line, the seam line there on the fabric. So I'm not coming into here, I'm making it just a nice square, come around. 
and then go ahead and fill that space and then we'll come back over to the edge there to get to where we need to go next. So we're just gonna make the feather and then you're just gonna be bumping back on the tops of some of the, on some of the points to get to the next one and drawing it backwards. So we'll start from the bottom to the top, bounce back top to the bottom and then just alternate that all the way around. So now we're ready to go. So remember, if you wanted to mark these straight lines out that we're doing with the four straight lines here, you could definitely go ahead and mark those out first and just evenly space four across there. Um, or else you can go ahead and just eyeball it. The same thing up here, we're gonna go ahead and, you know, you have one in the center. So when you're doing that, you're just basically splitting this into fourths. And I'm just gonna go ahead and eyeball it, but you could also, if you wanted to, not necessarily draw all the lines out, but you felt more comfortable, you could put just dots to give you um, points to aim for as you're going along. So it's just what you feel comfortable doing. One thing I am gonna go ahead and make sure that I mark though, is my square here in the middle. Well, I would like to say that I could definitely hit straight lines and have it all line up at the end. I'm not sure if I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my ruler and just mark in about, probably about three quarters of an inch here on this space, between a half and three quarters of an inch, depending on kind of how much space you want in the middle. And I'll mark that out first and then we'll start closing. So as always, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put it in right here on this point and pull up my bottom thread. And then from there, I'm gonna take a couple of little stitches. And now I'm ready to go ahead and move it so that um, I can go down my line. And here I am just gonna go ahead and follow down the the side, I'm not necessarily gonna worry about getting right in the ditch if I want to see that. If you don't want to see it, try to stay as close to the ditch as possible. So I'm just gonna go down the side just a little bit until I get to my marked line. I don't know if you can see that there, but I did mark that line. And then remember, when I'm doing straight lines, I'm just turning it. So I'm going straight forward, straight back, or straight side to side. I'm not trying to do those on a diagonal. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out and then back in. And then we'll go ahead and turn and do the next part of the square. I am turning it a little bit more. I'd probably go the other direction, but I wanna make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. So you don't necessarily need to turn it quite as much if you can go side to side. And then when I get to the end, I'm just gonna follow that line right back out. So now I'm ready to go ahead and start on my feather. So I'm not going to start in the corner. That's gonna be a really hard one to try to kind of get right off the bat. So I'm actually gonna start with this one out here a little bit. So first I'm gonna go ahead, like I said, just swoop out and come all the way back into the start to make that first petal. Now from here, every other petal is gonna be based off of this one here. I'm gonna turn it so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna follow down along here a little bit and come out and then just touch the top of this petal. Now I think the petals, if you really wanna kind of make them be the best they can be is really fill that space. 
I'm gonna follow along the top of it, down just a little bit. Now from here, I'm gonna loop out and then just curve right back into the bottom. Then from there, I'm just gonna repeat until I get over to the corner. Okay, so now from here, it's gonna be a little bit of a weird angle, but I'm just gonna go ahead and curve out and I'm still gonna come back and touch this as I curve around that corner. So from here, I am gonna have a little bit more space that I need to backtrack to get back to where my next feather is gonna go. And remember, if you're having trouble keeping those curves smooth, try going just a little bit faster. So I'm gonna stop here because now I wanna go ahead and match up over here. So I'm gonna kinda of just plan out what I need to go. So I need to put one here, and then I'm gonna come down here and put my last one there so that it kinda of follows up along that start of the first one. Point, I don't normally like to break thread unless I have to, but because my feather doesn't go to the edge anywhere and I don't have any seams anywhere to get me out to this outer edge, this is one of those instances where I'm going to need to stop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple small stitches and this just helps to kind of secure it in place. Then I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to hold this thread. Then I'm going to go down and grab it one more time. And then what that's going to allow me to do is to hold both sides pull up that bottom thread, and then I'm just gonna cut that off. Then I can go ahead and just tie these threads in a knot, and I'll bury them like I did um, the beginning thread later on. So now we're gonna go ahead and go to the next section, which is gonna be our triangles out here. And so I will just go ahead and put my thread down and pull it up again and just start as if we were starting at the beginning. So 
So now here, like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do four and I'm gonna try to keep them pretty much evenly space centered. One, two, three, four. And that's gonna end me back on this side. Now from there, I'm just gonna go ahead and follow the seam, the ditch, to get over to the next one, and I'll start there from the inside. And then from there, skin seam, same thing. Just follow down along, and then we'll just continue stitching lines all the way around these outer triangles. Now we're ready to go ahead and move on to our corner block. So I'm just gonna follow along the seam here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just go along the seam up to that bar that connects them. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna go ahead, I'm gonna be using my foot as kind of my spacing guide. So I'm just gonna go down. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the center triangle. And then from here, we're just gonna go out, said to about fourth way. So I'm gonna go ahead, you got your halfway here, and then split those in half. So that's where I'm gonna aim for. Then we're gonna move over to the middle, and then straight back. And then from there, split the other side in half. And you'll notice I use a lot of straight line accents in my blocks, and it's because I love the contrast between the straight lines and, and the curved shapes. It kind of acts as a nice background element to them and it doesn't detract from them too much. So we're just gonna follow down along the edge 
And I'm gonna go ahead and match the direction of my outer feathers to the direction of my inner feathers. So I wanna start where my inner feathers, if you can see them, are going around this way uh, clockwise. I wanna go ahead and make sure that I start on this side so that I can clockwise the outer feathers too. So I'm first just gonna start off with that first feather and then using these seams as my border, come in. But the thing I wanna watch here is I've got a quarter of an inch that is going to be in my seam. And I don't really want the tops of my feathers to get cut off. So I'm actually going to stop about a quarter of an inch or just under a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric. It's also gonna make it easier to move because you're not trying to quilt all the way to the edge. So then from here, we're just gonna follow along that seam. And out the side here. Now I can turn my block, cut across here, and go over to the next corner.
after you finish your last corner, now block five is all done. So as you're working on those feathers, don't stress that they aren't perfectly um, even or a little squampy here or there. Feathers just take a lot of practice. Even me not doing a lot of quilting on my domestic machine since I have my long arm now, some of my feathers weren't quite round. It's okay, just go with it. It's a learning process and you will get better the more you do it. Also a little bit later on, I have some funky feathers that I like to do that don't have to be as um, round and precise. So it's a little bit more freeing. So you might actually want to venture in, learn some of the different feathers that you can do that aren't all necessarily nice, perfect, formal feathers. So if you have any questions, don't forget to reach out. We'll answer those questions for you. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to check out the link in the blog to the blog. And we'll see you next time.